Hi, this is Tim of the 1916 Company. Welcome and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email us tmasso at the 1916company.com for pricing. That's tmasso at the 1916company.com for pricing. Launched in 2016 and discontinued, this is the extremely inventive and I would almost say category-defining Vacheron Constantin Overseas World Time. Full integrated bracelet steel sports watches with world time displays are very unusual. It's true there is something approaching this in the Omega catalog in the Aquaterra collection, but it's not as complex as what Vacheron hath wrought and it's not nearly as fine. This is the biggest of the overseas collection. You're going to find that if you want something rivaling the wrist presence of an Hublot Big Bang Unico or an Audemars Piguet Royal Look Offshore, this is going to get it done. At the same time, it is both brains and brawn because it uses a different approach to world time that acknowledges there are, in fact, more than 24 time zones in the world. Most world timers don't do that. I'm going to show you how Vacheron does. So 43.5 millimeters in diameter in steel. It's 12.8 millimeters thick, so it's not all that thick. Lug to lug, we're just measuring the case. It's 50.8 millimeters, and then if we measure the first link on each side, the total rigid distance across the wrist is 56.4. So I'm gonna put this on my wrist now. My wrist is 16 centimeters in circumference. It really is a very unusual thing. Langa, Patek Philippe, Audemars Piguet, most of the boutique independents, they really don't have anything like this. And you might be surprised that at my wrist size, it fits beautifully. Take a look at that. The bracelet links are actually curving out on each side, suggesting you might even be able to wear this on a slightly smaller wrist. Being under 13 millimeters with a sloped bezel, it will fit underneath the cuff, maybe even a dress sleeve. Being a Vacheron, it's becoming of this watch to be compatible with formal attire. But remember, it's also 150 meters water resistant with a screw down crown and 25,000 ampere per meter anti-magnetic. So there's a great deal of toughness built into this watch. There's also a lot of cleverness. So let's start with one of the standout features of the third generation overseas, and it is the quick release system. Now, I don't have the nails that I normally do, so let me see if I can do this. I've got to, unfortunately, manicure my nails for these videos so I don't have a lot of them. But there's a little pull tab on each side that allows you to quickly remove the bracelet. And this is important because the watch comes with two straps, one in rubber, one in leather, alligator leather. And then, because this clasp stays with the bracelet, there is a second deployant clasp that comes with the watch to be used with the straps. There is a quick release system so you can attach and detach that clasp from the straps. And so, this is just a brilliant system. It is full of thoughtful details. Check this out. On each side of the clasp, you have a sleeved and sliding snap-in, snap-out, 1.5 millimeter tool-free adjustment. It allows you to make small changes, one, both, neither, to fine-tune the fit when it's on the wrist. You can see it's a twin trigger, double fold, so very secure unless you press both triggers. The Maltese cross is the logo of Vacheron. You'll find it everywhere here. It's the motif of the bezel, the motif of the center of the links. It is the motif you will find on the crown. You will find it on the case back. And then you will also find it on the dial. So we're getting ahead of ourselves right here, but let's talk about this bracelet because there's still a lot to unpack. See how every single link on both sides of the bracelet's removable? That gives you a lot of flexibility in sizing. And look at the finish. See how this rolled expanding bevel along the lug hood continues perfectly down the shoulders of the links? Outer faces are polished, the tops are satinated, but look at these intricate interior angled polished facets. Really thoughtful hand finishing that is laborious and time consuming. So a lot of impressive craft art went into this watch. Again, you need to have bigger nails than I do. You can see I've clipped my nails down to stumps for your viewing pleasure here. But the back of the watch, a few things that you don't get on previous generations the overseas. First, a display case back. Second, a manufacturer movement. Third, Geneva Hallmark. Now you can see Geneva Hallmark since 2012 is a standard for the full watch. So yeah, it's on the movement. You can see it right there, but it's also on the case. And so it's a standard for the entire assembled watch of fit, finish, materials, and aesthetics. We've got a rotor here made of 22 karat gold, 
no pennies pinched, not 21 karat, not 18. It's a compass rose design that has four different finishes on it. At center, black polished screws with a sunburst over a hybrid ceramic bearing that uses ceramic balls and steel races. This is the automatic caliber 2460 WT for world time. 40 hour power reserve. It has a four hertz beat rate. It is adjusted in five positions, which is the high horology and chronometer standard. And it pivots on 27 joules. Now it also features the world time complication with 37 distinct zones, but it's got a feature you won't find on some of the more, quote, deluxe overseas movements. This has hacking seconds, which the self-winding and its caliber 5100 cannot match. So advantage world time. I'm just going to put all this back together real quick here. The finishing on the movement second to none, but so is the finishing on the dial. You can see the brushed, raised and relieved metallic continents there. This is a Lambert projection. And then outboard, we have a couple of different lacquered sapphires. So there's one lacquered sapphire that's shaded over the center that shows you the places where it's roughly day. That's the lighter shaded portion. And the places where it's roughly night, the darker shaded portion opposite of that. We have another lacquered disc that sits on top of a sunburst metallic dial. So you can see the sunburst, but then you can also see these floating city names. Those are all lacquered on. There's also a lacquered disc, the 24 hour reference ring for the cities. Now you can see right now I'm in La Paz and you put your reference city, there's a little index to remind you, down at six o'clock. The other way you can remember is that your reference city is the one that's right side up. So clearly we're not in Beijing, but you can easily gauge, for example, what the time is in La Paz. You can see that we are at about 11.20. And then you can see that we are the exact opposite of that. We are 11.20 p.m. in Beijing. And that's exactly how it works. You read the hour next to your reference city and maybe 11.21 right there. So you can see it's 11.21. And this is one of the few world time systems that can actually process the non-standard time zones. Now, the way this works is you just read the reference city next to the hour adjacent, and then you read the minutes at center. This is the Louis Cotier system, first invented by that watchmaker and adopted by others starting in the 1930s. Now, what is a little bit different here is you can see, as I change the reference city down at six o'clock, you will see that the minute hand sometimes jumps in irregular steps. And that's because not all of these are perfect one-hour differentials. There are, of course, 24 principal time zones, but there are also quite a few others which differ by minutes. And that's why you'll see that as I set my new reference time or my new reference city, that there are changes to the minute that are in increments of other than 60. So now we pull the crown out all the way so you can see how this works. You can see I'm able to adjust everything without actually changing the reference city. So this is a little bit of an unusual world timer in that the world time reference ring and the hour at center move in a clockwise direction. They usually move counter to each other with the reference ring moving counterclockwise. And of course, you could see with the shading, one, one semicircle is light for approximate daytime, one semicircle is dark for approximate nighttime. And if you look at the shading over the center, you can see the shading over the water and the continents moves with that darkened semicircle. The hands are white gold, so they'll never tarnish or oxidize. And there is luminescence, but only on the hands. A really special watch. By the way, I didn't go too deep into the finish. It's everything you'd expect of a Geneva Hallmark movement. All the standards are observed. It's just a relatively workmanlike Geneva seal movement. Automatic with a 40 hour power reserve, stop seconds, and then this very sophisticated modular world time on the top. You'll be hard pressed to find a watch like this from anyone else. A world time autologerie integrated bracelet steel sports watch. Reach out to Team Also at the 1916 company for purchase and pricing details.